most students watching this, in fact, over 99% don't know how to do all three of the topics I'm going to show you today. You might be able to do some of them, but not all of them. Let's see in the comments if I'm right. The overall topic is repeating and terminating decimals. You may have heard it being called recurring decimals. That's those numbers that carry on forever. You know, like 0 0.13131313. That's called a repeating decimal. A terminating decimal, as the word terminate might imply, is one that ends at a certain point, such as 0 0.25 is a terminating decimal, but one third, which is 0 0.3333333 to infinity, is a repeating decimal. That's the terminology, but how would they actually ask a question and what would we do? Let's take this question we have here. It's a GRE quantity comparison, and of course, repeating and terminating decimals can come up in the GRE and the GMAT quite commonly. In a decimal number, a bar over one or more consecutive digits means that the pattern of digits under the bar repeats without end. What's bigger, 0 0.31 with a bar over the 31, or 0 0.313 with a bar over the 313? Many students get tricked by this kind of question and think both quantities are equal because they think, aren't they both saying the same thing? like 313131. So what's the difference? Let's demonstrate how they're different. And if some of the students listening to this are thinking, oh, this is a bit easy, I could do this without any help, wait till you get to topic number two and three. Anyway, let me demonstrate. So quantity A is 0 0.31, where the three and the one is recurring. So if you write that out longhand, you'll get 0 0.313131, as you can see here. And then underneath that, I'm going to encourage you to write quantity B in the same way. But remember, this time it's 313, which is repeating, not just 31. And what you'll notice is a slightly different result. So 0 0.313 recurring looks like 0 0.313, 313, 313, etc. And you notice something. The number below has a 3 where the number above has a one, which makes the number below 0 0.313 recurring slightly bigger. So both quantities aren't the same, quantity B is actually bigger. So it pays off in this instance to write out the numbers longhand to see which one is actually bigger. But don't you worry, we're just getting started. What about another way they can test you on repeating and terminating decimals? And here I'm convinced that at least the majority of students won't know how to do this. Here's an example of what would be a difficult question on this topic. Again, in a decimal number, a bar over one or more consecutive digits means that the pattern of digits under the bar repeats without end. So here they're talking about 1.21 with the bar over two and one. So the number would be 1.21212121 forever. If that number is expressed as a fraction in its simplest form, what integer is in the numerator? The numerator, don't forget, is the top line of the fraction. The denominator is the bottom line. Now, at this point, I honestly think the majority of students watching are like, hmm, actually, what is that number? 1.2121, is that 21 over 100? Or is that two over 10? Like, hmm, this is quite hard. And so let me step in to help you out. Now, at this point, I could give you the instant shortcut, and you can skip ahead in the video if you wanna see the instant shortcut, but I quickly wanna prove where it comes from. Let me do that. So I'm gonna call 0 0.21212121, that's the bit after the decimal. I'm gonna call that X. So basically the repeating bit, I'm gonna call X. And now what I'm about to do, and you don't have to remember this for the exam, I'm just proving a formula. What I'm about to do to prove the formula is multiply both sides by 100. This gives me 21.212121 because the decimal point moves two to the right. So 0.21 becomes 21.2121. And that would equal 100x because I've multiplied both sides by 100. Okay, following so far, the bottom line is x. So times both sides by 100. 
and the top line is 100x. Now I'm going to subtract those two terms or those two equations. On the right, 100x, take away x, is 99x. And on the left, notice the 0.21s cancel out. Even though it carries on to infinity, they cancel out to infinity. So you're just left with 21.0, or just the number 21. And that equals 99x. Finally, dividing both sides by 99, we get x is 21 over 99. And look at what we've accomplished. We've converted a repeating decimal into a simple fraction. And now I'm about to tell you the shortcut. Some of those from earlier in the video have skipped to this point, not caring where it comes from, but here is the shortcut. Basically what you do is you count the number of numbers under the bar. If it's two numbers under the bar, it's that number over 99. If it's one number under the bar, it's that number over nine. If it's three numbers under the bar, it's that number over 999. And that's how you convert any repeating decimal into a fraction. And I've proven why it works if you care about that kind of thing. So we have the number 1.21, and we know that the 0.21 recurring, of course, is 21 over 99. So what about some other examples? 0.4 recurring, there's one number under the bar, so that would be four over nine. 0.456 recurring, there's three numbers under the bar, so it would be 456 over 999. I don't wanna to do too many examples at the risk of repeating myself, pun, 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 but you get the idea. The number of numbers under the bar equals the number of nines in the denominator. Finally, let's get to the actual question because many of you would have noticed that we have a one at the front. How does that make a difference? Well, let's just separate it out. 1.21 recurring is just one plus what we now know to be the fraction 21 over 99. And now all we have to do is simply convert the one to being a fraction as well, ideally with the same denominator as the 21 over 99. One, we can write as 99 over 99, basically adding fractions. And then we have 99 over 99 plus 21 over 99, and that equals 120 over 99, which if you simplify that by dividing by three is 40 over 33. How do I know you can't simplify that even further? Because the only prime numbers in 33 are three and 11, and neither of those go into 40. So that's the fraction in the simplest form, giving us the integer in the numerator, the top line, as 40. So 40 would be the correct answer. But what have we learned from this? Well, we've learned the origin of this shortcut, and we've learned an amazing shortcut for converting any repeating decimal into a fraction, and even how to deal with numbers which are part integer, part repeating decimal. But lo and behold, I am not actually finished. Which of the following could be expressed as terminating decimals? Tick all that apply. Now, even those students in the GRE who are thinking, well, I could put this into a calculator. First of all, we could have made the numbers much bigger, so it's even harder to put in the calculator. And second of all, that would take ages. What if you only have a minute left in the test? What's the shortcut that can give us the answer in 20 to 30 seconds? I'm betting, again, the majority of you wouldn't know how to do this. But the secret is this. If any prime other than the numbers two or five is left in the simplified denominator of a fraction, so it's left in the denominator after you've simplified, then that fraction is repeating. Otherwise, it's terminating. Let me be clear, that's a lot to memorize. But basically, twos and fives are allowed in the denominator. That would keep a fraction being terminating. It would stop at a certain point. Basically, the secret is because two and five go into 10. But if there's any other prime that's left in the denominator, such as an 11, a three, a 13, any other prime, then that fraction will carry on forever. It will be a repeating or recurring decimal. The reason I wrote is left in a simplified denominator is because of course you have to simplify the fraction first. 
there might be an 11 in the denominator initially, and you might think, therefore, it's repeating, but then it gets cancelled out, and there are no 11s left, or any other non-5 or non-2 prime, and therefore, it's a terminating decimal. So you have to simplify first, and then check which primes are left in the denominator. If it's only 2s and 5s, you're good to go, it's terminating. Any other prime, even just one of them, and no, it's a repeating decimal. Let's try that for each of these five fractions. You may want to try first to see what you get, or you can just watch me do it. Look at that first fraction at the top, 5 over 2 to the 4, 3 to the 2. We can't simplify that fraction because nothing is there to be prime factorized or cancelled out. But what do we have in the denominator? We have a 3. We have a prime which is not a 2 or a 5. So therefore, it will be a repeating decimal because there is a 3 left in the denominator. Actually, there's two 3s left in the denominator, but that doesn't matter. As long as there's one, it's repeating. What about the next fraction? Isn't that repeating because we have a 3 squared in the denominator? No. If you simplify the second fraction, the 3 squared and the 3 cubed will cancel down, cancelling out the 3 squared in the denominator and just leaving a 3 in the numerator meaning the only thing left in the denominator will be 2 to the power of 5. So that will be a terminating decimal. The 3 was cancelled out. What about the third one? What do you think? Well, it's a number other than 2 and 5, so isn't that a problem? No, because if you simplify this fraction, 10 to the power of 5 becomes 2 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 5. So 10 is made up of 2s and 5s, so it's fine. It's terminating it will stop at a certain point. How about the fourth fraction? Again, that's going to be repeating because of a 7. It's not a 3 this time, but I said any prime other than 2 and 3 will make it repeating if it's still left over. So because of the 7, or the two 7s, but even just 1 is enough, because of the 7 left in the denominator, it's a repeating fraction. Finally, what about the last one? This will be a terminating decimal. The reason being is because even though we have a number other than 2 and 5, we have a 4. If you simplify the 4, 4 is 2 squared. So again, it's made up of only 2s and 5s, so it's terminating. Now, please do let me know in the comments if any of these tricks helped you out. If there are any one of them that you didn't know before, I'd love to find out. Have a wonderful day.